My name is Kevin Maloney. I'm a battalion chief with the Greeley, Colorado Fire Department, and this is our sixth SVI trucks fire engine uh, for our fleet of seven fire stations in Greeley. Um, almost our entire frontline fleet is from SVI truck and even a couple of rigs that we have had refurbed here. We have seven frontline engines, uh, two frontline ladder trucks, a heavy rescue truck, two tenders, uh, several command vehicles uh, makes up our fleet along with some other reserve apparatus. This is the final fire engine in a multi-year contract that we've had with SVI trucks and the quality, the workmanship, and even the price is right for us. We did go out to competitive bid process before signing this contract several years ago and SVI trucks rose to the top obviously not only with price but with quality, workmanship, and proximity to us, which provides us great service. We've developed a great relationship with SVI Trucks to where we feel they are very responsive to our needs and build us the fire trucks that we need to serve our community. We went with a Spartan Gladiator cab with the ISX-15 Cummins motor and Allison transmission. Uh, it's a four-person cab. Uh, we prefer the custom cab from Spartan because of the safety features and the, the roominess of the interior of the cab and then the maneuverability of the chassis. We do ask for some customization in the cab and I can show that. Uh, we have uh, an extensive array of advanced life support equipment including a cardiac monitor, pediatric kits, OB kits, general general medical kits with all the typical advanced life support drugs and equipment that the crews carry. We do run uh, paramedic engines on every engine in our city so they are well equipped and everything is climate controlled inside that cab. So in the back work area of the cab we have room for two firefighters. We have uh, rechargeable hand lanterns for them and, uh, and then we also have it's a uh, uh, pass through cab style so that personnel can communicate and see and discuss what's going to happen or what needs to happen. We've come to realize that the cab of a fire truck is the firefighters workspace. It's their office. They spend a lot of time in here and uh, wearing bulky equipment or, or getting ready um, t as they respond to an incident and they need their equipment within reach when they exit the cab. So we've asked, we've worked with SVI trucks to help design these compartments in here. And then Spartan of course provides this spacious cab for us to do all of our work and carry our equipment. The EMS compartments provide electrical outlets for anything that needs to be recharged. It also provides nice lighting for nighttime so that the crews can see what's inside the compartments. They've got crash rated roll up doors that, that go completely up and out of the way and then shelving to, to carry the assortment of equipment that we have. We've also designed a door into the side of the cab so equipment can be accessed from either inside the cab or outside the cab through this full height door. So moving towards the back of the fire engine, uh, we come to our uh, really the, the heart of a any fire pumper engine. And we have two crosslay uh, features here. And they're, they're, we have them set up so that they're easily deployable. We feel like they're a good height for most firefighters, pretty low and very manageable so that uh, we can try to avoid any injury of somebody from the, instead of the old days where you're pulling a crosslay off the top of a rig, these are much more manageable and we feel like they're even safer to, uh, for the crews to operate. This is a 1500 gallon per minute pumper. So we have added a large diameter discharge. We do run into some occasions in our district where we have extended supply line lays and we also where we can relay pump and then we also would use these to supply a large diameter FDC on a building. So we think the pump is set up very nicely for us. The large main passenger side intake and then an auxiliary intake. Here is our, our uh, electric and hydraulic ground ladder control switches. So the ground ladders can be deployed. And what's nice about this is this, this ladder rack arm is long enough that when it comes down off this truck, these compartment doors can still open and they do not interfere with each other. So we think that's an important feature as well. So this is our, our first curbside compartment and right now it's empty, but this will allow space for the company officer and the firefighter to store their bunker gear when they're not wearing it 
uh, responding to an emergency, as well as some other miscellaneous equipment. The shelves are heavy duty and they're fully adjustable and the, the compartment is also well lit so they can see what's inside it in the dark. Going around the fire engine, we have uh, a dry chem fire extinguisher as well as a pressurized water extinguisher that are, are very easily accessible to the firefighter as he or she exits the, the side door. We have some hand tools in our forcible entry compartment. Everything is nice and cleanly mounted. It, everything's in its place and, and there's really no risk for this stuff to be bouncing around and falling out of the compartment when you open the door. Everything is nice and secured exactly the way it should be. We've, we've learned through experience that it's nice to have the vehicle manufacturer mount and install whatever equipment we can have them do and that way it's kind of a turnkey operation so we worked with svi trucks to design the layout of this compartment including the the pack track um, facing on on the walls of the compartment and the as well as the brackets so svi trucks works with us and and we discuss with them what we'd like to see in the compartment and they make it happen so we have another fender well compartment inside here we're going to store several scba bottles nice and clean storage coming to the back of the fire engine we have the double doors in the rear compartment with a heavy duty slide out tray uh, we'll carry a gasoline powered uh, blower and we also have a battery powered super vac smoke ejector fan that will go here as well SVI uh, installed the, the little giant ladder for us, and then we also have extra shelving available for whatever equipment ends up on this fire engine when it's in service. So the back of the fire engine has plenty of room for the various hose loads and, and uh, diameters that we carry. We carry a thousand feet of five inch hose and then several pre-connected hose lines and, and various supply loads. So we have plenty of room for that. Our hose bed covers are pneumatic so that they lift themselves with these switches here. So those are heavy doors that, that are actually walkable surfaces on the top of this fire engine. So they're very heavy and uh, they work great. But when I learned we could add this feature of this electric and, and pneumatic door raising mechanism, we thought that was nice because it's a safety feature for our people. We've put plenty of foldable steps that also light up when the truck batteries are on so that the personnel have good NFPA rated steps and grab bars um, and also a full walking surface step here at the hose bed so personnel can easily get on and off of the rear of this fire truck one thing that i really like on our fire trucks in our fleet at home is that we've added a third brake light to the rear of the fire truck fire trucks get tailgated every day when they're going to calls and the emergency lights tend to get lost with the brake lights when the brake lights come in and we're afraid that a car might not see the brake lights come on so a separate standalone third brake light is important to us to warn that traffic behind us that our brakes have been applied and this truck will be slowing down again another roll-up door with a nice slide out tray for uh, hydrant equipment and whatever uh, miscellaneous equipment the crew will end up putting on here when the truck goes in service we carry a portable mini monitor on the back of the rig so it's also quickly accessible svi truck has mounted that and again it's kind of nice to do that while it's here at the manufacturer because the mounting gets done very nice and professional and and it obviously looks like it belongs there one more safety feature we've added to this truck this is the first vehicle in our fleet that has this but we we've included a backup camera system so that when the the driver operator is backing up he or she can see exactly what's behind them. This is technology that's on virtually every new uh, passenger vehicle and, and car and truck these days, and we thought it would be a good idea to put it on a fire truck. Um, we do use spotters when we're backing up. However, we felt like this just is gonna enhance that safety a little bit more even. On each side of this fire truck, we have side mounted cameras that are activated when the turn signal is applied, the left hand, camera comes on so that the driver can see if inside any blind spots if he or she is going to be changing lanes or making a left hand turn and on the other hand when he or she turns on that right hand turn signal the right hand camera comes on and and the driver operator can see in the screen in the cab what is on the right side of that fire truck in the blind spots 
We have LED scene lighting on all four sides of this fire engine. And so here's an example of that. So one thing unique about this fire truck is we omitted the onboard generator. So the we felt like the LED electrical load that this fire truck has is very well managed and capable of being managed by the alternator of the engine. So it's a very low draw system. So we cut the generator from this rig. Every other fire truck in our fleet has a generator. This is the first one without it. So a little bit of a trial and error, but we're confident that it's gonna work. Inside this compartment, here's another feature we worked with SVI trucks on is a hose hanger. And this is for our high rise hose packs. Traditionally, we've just thrown them in a compartment on a shelf and they, they bounce around and they're, they're a little bit unwieldy. So we've got this heavy duty hose hanger where we can hang our two high rise hose packs for high rise in incidents. We also have pack tracking um, capability on the sidewalls of the compartment, full height, and then uh, the full floor. All of our compartments are vented so that we get good air circulation. Sometimes we get water inside these from equipment that gets put away wet and whatnot, and the ventilation component of that compartment keeps things from molding and starting to smell bad. To the next compartment is our above the fender well compartment. This is partly just for the driver operator, really. That person's SCBA will be mounted here. We have a kitchen class fire extinguisher and uh, uh, just a small dry chem fire extinguisher in case this fire truck were to have a problem that this is basically the DOT extinguisher. There will be a RIT pack in, inside this strap once we get this rig in service and then on the back wall is a piercing nozzle. So again, we worked with SVI trucks to make sure that everything has a place and that everything can be in its place. Continuing on with our compartments, we call this the engineer's compartment. And one thing that we do that I think might be a little bit unique is we reverse hinge this door. We feel like if the engineer is coming out of the driver's seat, they would wanna open this door this direction so that as they have a free flow from their pump panel to inside their engineer compartment with all of their fittings and adapters and extra nozzles. The wheel chocks are in here. We don't like carrying the wheel chocks underneath the chassis of the truck because number one, they're kept cleaner in here. And number two, it no longer becomes a hazard to get ripped off when you run over a bump or, or possibly against a curb or a parking block or something like that. So this setup works nicely for us for a couple different reasons. Now here's the heart of any pumper. So this is the engineer's pump panel and you can see it's, it's pretty complicated to the untrained eye, but to the trained eye, it's laid out very nicely. Everything's in a row. We, we decided years ago to go to the, to the wheel cranks for the, all the discharges, and we feel like that allows that driver operator to open and close discharges in a very controlled manner. Um, we've gone with a pump boss uh, governor system on this rig. And one thing that uh, is a definite upgrade is that on every discharge meter, there's also a, a gallons per minute flow meter integrated with that. We like uh, FRFs or FRC products, and that's what we use for these components. So here's the front of our pumper. And one, the kind of the main feature here is we've got a hose tray that will accommodate about 200 feet of inch and a half hose. We use that as a quick jump line for vehicle fires and trash fires. So it's a nice spacious bumper compartment for that with discharge piping. We also have drains on every discharge line so that the water won't freeze in cold weather. Once in a while, we get some cold weather here in Northern Colorado. Um, we've always been a fire department that uses the federal Q siren and I don't see that stopping. Um, we've gone to the Mars light on our engines and we love those things. And on our trucks, on our truck companies at home, we put the roto rays. So at nighttime, when the incident commander sees these rigs coming down the road to their incident, they can tell if it's an engine or a truck at just a quick glance. One feature I do like is we put uh, scene lights, brow lights on the top of the fire engines now. And we not only put them up there, but we angle them outwards 15 degrees to both sides. That way, as the fire truck is coming down the street looking for a house address, the driver can flip on those lights as they're pulling to a stop and light up the fronts of the house with the front brow lights.